everybody, my name is Tuba Splat, and welcome to, I guess it's a year in review kind of video. Um, I'm going to be talking about a whole broad amount of subjects here, but today I just want to talk about 2020 for the year of wrestling. Was 2020 a good year for the world of professional wrestling? And I think my answer is yes and no. And I just want to establish first and foremost that this is all just purely my opinion. I know others are bound to disagree uh, with my thoughts, but that's what it's all about, having a discussion. And I know I'm a little bit late talking about 2020 and just that this I'm recording this on New Year's Eve, but I think I should we should look at this as a time of reflection as hopefully... 2021 is already going to be off to a better start. So first I want to talk about the bad that happened in wrestling. Obviously, first and foremost are the deaths that um, happened this year. Uh, the more recent one is being Brody Lee. Um, then you can't forget Rocky Johnson, Howard Finkel, Pat Patterson, uh, Hana Kimura, I apologize if I mispronounced her name wrong. And then just just several um, rest, people in the wrestling world have passed away this year. Um, and I apologize if I'm wrong, but I remember seeing online that there was like a whole memorial of those that we lost this year. And it just seems like that this year was a lot longer than most, but... Um, now, obviously, another negative thing is, obviously, the big elephant in the room, the COVID pandemic. Um, it's unfortunate, um, and I won't go into politics too much, but it's, you just got to deal with the cards that you're dealt with, unfortunately. Um, obviously, the lack of crowds, and even those that, do allow them, um, but just the lack of crowds, especially for when the pandemic hit, it was WrestleMania season for WWE, and just to have no audience, it's just, it was a complete, found like, shaking of the foundation that is wrestling, that, you know, all the performers feed off the energy and the hype and electricity in the air that comes with professional wrestling, but not to have that especially for big moments like when Drew McIntyre won the WWE title. It's just, there's nobody there. And it's, again, it's just a really unfortunate situation. But the whole world is struggling. And we're on the curve to hopefully getting it solved out with the vaccines being rolled out, etc. Um, another negative I want to talk about is the whole WWE independent contractor thing. Uh, that's that's a bag of worms in itself. That Obviously, for those who don't know, that WWE uh, shut down third-party usage for their employees like Cameo, Twitch, um, YouTube, etc. Except for those who, I guess, they more or less signed away their channel, like, uh, that's, again, probably, lack of a better term, signed away, sold out, I guess, better put it that way. Um, for, like, up, up, down, down, for example. Like, that's, like, a WWE-affiliated, WWE-approved thing, where, as opposed to all the wrestlers who had their Twitch channels, like Paige, Zelina Vega, uh, Adam Cole, Tyler Breeze, Mia Yim, etc., that they were performing out of character and they I guess WWE just didn't like that not so much the whole kayfabe thing but just that they were earning money on the side that WWE decided hey we can have some we can have a piece of that pie and uh, yeah so they just weren't allowing their performers to earn extra income and again, that they refer to them as independent contractors, where independent being an independent contractor means you can 
go and do what you want, but yet they can't because they're signed to a multi-year deal that they only can perform exclusively for WWE and their brands, whether it's Raw, SmackDown, NXT, 205, NXT UK. So, but then on the other side of the whole independent contractor topic is, now we move to the positives, I believe, for 2020 was the whole talk about unionization, which I'm not an expert on, but I know that if if enough people rally together that it will, and that's the whole point about unionization is that you get a whole group of people together and you want to make changes for your employment. But again, that's a whole, whole double-edged sword that it can work out for you and it could not at the same time that if you get enough people together with the whole same common idea common bond that you want these goals to be reached and you want to try and negotiate with your employers um so and i know that's a that was a big thing that uh jesse ventura tried to do before I, be, I forget now which WrestleMania. I think it was WrestleMania 2, and I just saw a video about this the other day, um, that he tried to unionize the wrestlers back in the 80s, I think, again, before WrestleMania 2, and Hogan basically um, talked him out of it. <laughs> or just was, like, immediately shutting that down, because I guess uh, Jesse Ventura was trying to get him to be a big spokesperson for unionization. Uh, another big positive thing, um, again, it's another divisive topic um is the speaking out movement that happened in wrestling where a lot of light was shown on those who misbehaved outside of the ring i guess prior to being signed to wwe or any promotion in general um like Joey Ryan, for example, uh, he was his contract was terminated with Impact Wrestling, as well as a handful of those in NXT UK, like Travis Banks, um, Ligero, and I believe someone else. And I'm apologize, I can't think of their name. But um, just again, it's another just shine a light on what the world really is. Like, it's not just, you know, a perfect bubble where nobody can hurt you. And this it's reality stuff that does happen. Uh, another positive for 2020 was... <laughs> for me, I think it's a positive. And again, not to say that these performers deserved it, but it gave them, an, it gave them basically... A reason to get out and to be to be who they want to be and that is the whole WWE cuts again it's another thing where the WWE was releasing obviously for budget reasons they were releasing so many people and a lot of them were those who I think the community as a whole it's like you want them to be in that cut but at the same time it's like you don't want to be put in a bad light saying like oh yeah this person should be released because they're not being used that being the main thing um but for me i look at it as obviously wwe's roster is over inflated like super super over inflated um they had people on their payroll that were basically just sitting at home doing nothing and then if they did then they would get reprimanded for it again with the whole twitch thing um third party usage thing so uh, again i just look at it as a positive that it finally gave them a chance to do some major house cleaning um to get rid of those who they aren't using and then it allowed those said people to go somewhere else examples like brian myers going over to impact wrestling and this is going to transfer my next point is allowing those people to perform somewhere else and 
basically be who they want to be creatively. Um, like Brian Myers going back to Impact Wrestling, Matt Cardona appearing for AEW, same with Miro signing to AEW. Um, so again, this translates to my next point that the pandemic or the year 2020 really gave a chance for other promotions to shine like AEW impact. Um, and even to NWA where again, like I said, like Matt Cardona went to AEW for a short time. Mike Canales goes to end, uh, the NWA and then Brian Myers, um, and Eric Young, they go back to, impact wrestling and just again they're they're free creatively to do what they want and other promotions are thriving because of it that they get more star power and usage out of those who were released and then the final thing that i have listed here as a positive for 2020 was that it forced the world of wrestling to think outside the box. And by that, I mean all the cinematic matches, um, holding events in different locations, like part of it. And again, it's a cinematic match, but I I immediately think of WWE's Money in the Bank pay-per-view where they held both Money in the Bank ladder matches in Stanford, where you got to go from the ground to the top of the building, build the Titan Towers, and um, get the briefcases. Um, And then the whole Swamp Fight thing, the greatest wrestling match ever between Randy Orton and Edge, and basically WrestleMania 36 as a whole with the whole Boneyard match, the Fiend, Firefly, Funhouse match with John Cena. And then with AEW having them do uh, have I don't even know what show because I don't watch AEW very often to be perfectly honest Uh, they had a show at uh, in the Jacksonville football stadium and then uh, it even an impact like they had the whole wrestle house thing which was I I love that I'll be honest Um, so again it's just it really forced wrestling to think outside the box and i think it's interesting that now we kind of take cinematic matches and maybe it's just again the world that we are in that we take them for what they are and we actually appreciate them again the boneyard match being the prime example of it um and the firefly funhouse matchup mania um but then yet they previously tried to do those things with the the House of Horrors match between Orton and Bray Wyatt, that was not really well received, as well as some early, other earlier attempts at cinematic matches. Um, but again, it's I, I look at it as the positive that they're forcing that the year 2020, the pandemic's really forcing wrestling to be more creative than it has ever been to be perfectly honest with you so but again that's just my thoughts and opinions on the world on the year that was 2020 so let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below um i hope that everyone has a happy new year and we can get 2020 kicked off the right way safely and um compared to 2020 2021 can only go up from here so again thank you everybody so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video